my feet and a light into my path. I will hide his words in my heart that I might not sin against God. Good morning. Good morning. Buenos dias. Thank you. Thank you, Tress. Thank you. Good morning. Um, some of you seventh graders don't know me. I'm Mrs. Cox. And Mr. Havens and I were talking about National Day of Prayer uh, several weeks ago, and I love to pray. Some of you have been on mission trips with me or just other things with me, and I love to pray. I just think mountains move when we pray. God changes things when we pray. And he's just waiting to invite us in. So today, we're going to pray. And some of you may be like, score, I can sit in my chair. I see them already sitting down in the back row, and I can lean my head back. <laughs> you will not be sitting down. So we are not sitting down to pray <laughs> at all. That's a myth in my world. I tend to pray, and I walk, and I walk, and I pray, and I move, and I love freedom and praying. So here's kind of, I'm going to give you some boundaries of what this is going to look like. Teachers, I would love for you to just be the perimeter and the prayer covering right now over um, this prayer time. So if you guys would move to the walls in the back, um, I would so appreciate that. Teachers, coaches, admin, people that are considered adults. I know, some of you seniors, you're close. You're so close. As my, as my tailor says, she texted me the other day and said, this adulting thing isn't all it, that I was thinking it was going to be. As she got to pay for breaks and something else the other day. So prayer. So here are the rules. You are not going to sit down. Um, now, do you have? I will tell you, that the enemy cannot hear your thoughts. So if when you pray, you pray quietly or without speaking, you're just talking in your head. If you want to go to battle with the enemy, you're going to speak out loud. So today, we're going to have the freedom to pray out loud. We're going to pray out loud. You're going to talk to the Holy Spirit just like you talk to that dude standing beside you. Okay, I say dude a lot. Dude reflects girls or boys in my world. So we're going to pray out loud, and we're going to kind of, everybody listen. We're going to pray out loud. Some of you may go, oh, my gosh, Ms. Cox, you're always so hard. I am. That is just the journey. But I'm going to require more of you today because I believe that it's time. And so we're going to pray today. And I'm going to kind of lead you in that. Gus and Caleb, are gonna, we're going to do worship as we do it. Music's going to be playing. Um, and let me tell you, I've watched. Guthrie has been on two um, trips to Bogota with me. He's a man of prayer. I've watched him weep over our school, over students, over just things that are burdening his heart. Um I've seen him be goofy, too, and I typically make him shave. But outside of that, he's a man that has a heart of prayer, and so does Caleb. And so when I wanted worship, I was like, I need two people up here that have a heart of worship and a heart of prayer. And so these two guys are joining me. And um, So here's the rules for you. You're not going to sit down. You can walk. You can pace, because I do. You can come up here and be on your knees at the front. You can go to a teacher and pray. Um, you, I, I, this, is the, this is the sticky point for me. You can go to a classmate or a peer and, pr and have them pray with you too. Don't be jacking around with them. Don't be distracting to them. If you, can't go, if you just need to stand in your space and you need to stand there, I believe the Holy Spirit is big enough to meet you there. He's big enough. My God is big enough. And so if that's what you need to do today, you're like, I have never done this. This is so weird. It's okay. So am I. You're going to be okay. You will make it through the next 25 minutes. But I would challenge you, get out of your chair. Get out of your row. Move somewhere. 
you're going to get between you and the Holy Spirit today. Let's pray. Holy Spirit, we invite you into this place. I feel like you're just already here. As I was here this morning at 715 and just worshiping and just on my knees before you, asking you to move, you just said, invite me in. And Lord, Holy Spirit, I did. And so you're already here. I ask this morning that you set up your seraphim and your cherubim on every door and entryway into this place, that nothing of the enemy shall come in. And you did. So, Father, right now, I invite you to do a work today in each of our hearts individually, at our school collectively, and in our nation. Father God, hear the cry of your people today. So, Holy Spirit, we invite you. We invite you in. You know, the first thing the Word says when we pray is we've got to get our own selves right. We've got to get our hearts right to come before the God of the universe, the God who created you. So that's what we're going to do right now. You're going to act. If there's something in you that needs to be different, maybe you're struggling in some area. Maybe you just got, let's just call it what it is. Maybe you got sin just stinking your life up. This is your moment. This is your moment. We're going to take about 30 seconds to a minute for you to just come before the creator of the universe and be real, lay it down. And and this is time for you to get you right before the Father. Okay? And again, you can move out of your pew. Um, this is not, we're not going to just stay in our rows. You can come up here. You can go to a teacher. You can get on your knees. Get where you need to do, get to get your heart knelt before the Lord right now. you create in me a clean heart, that you renew a right spirit in me. Father, I I just love how Coach Warwick constantly pounded in to us, Psalms 139. And so, Father, if there be any way in anything in me that is not of you, show me that today. Show me that right now, that I might confess, that I might ask for forgiveness, that you can remove that. Ask that, guys. Speak out loud. Thank you, Jesus. You know, when we go to Bogota, we go to the largest church, well, that I've ever seen in North and South and Central America, 25,000 people gathered in one facility worshiping God. Dude, it is. Okay, it's good now. Thank you, CJ. It is amazing. I believe it's a little bit of what heaven's going to be like. 
Because there are 25,000 people there ushering in the power and the presence of God. We watched people get up from a wheelchair and walk. It was amazing. But let me tell you what the most amazing thing I saw that Sunday in March. There were three people standing in front of us, and one man had almost wept the entire service. Um, and so they were standing in the second row. There were three cha- there were chairs in front of them. We were the next row back, and we were on the front. Um, we were in the front part of that, and so there's about probably this entire room space between us and the in the stage. And these three people are standing in front of us. One dude crying the whole time. And somewhere in that, Pastor Ricardo, just, it's time to, for the end. It's the end. And he says something. And those three people, and I'm telling you, one lady was probably mid-60s. As fast as they could, they threw three chairs out of their way. And they ran to the front and I watched that and I thought why chairs stand in our way every day what keeps us from being desperate to get to the front because that's where the Holy Spirit is dwelling what keeps you in your chair what's holding you back And we've all got it, right? We've all got chairs in front of us. Are you ready to move your chairs? Because today, you get the opportunity to move your chair. So I'm going to challenge you. If you've got a chair in your life, maybe it's chairs. Maybe it's five chairs, ten chairs. I don't know how many chairs you've got in your path. Today is your day to remove those chairs. These teachers on the outside and the areas, they would love to pray with you to move those chairs. There are people standing beside you. There's seniors up here and juniors that would love to pray with you about moving your chairs. But you know who would love to pray with you is the Holy Spirit. He would love for you to say, I'm sorry that people have been my chairs. But I've allowed people to stand in my way and keep me in my pew. Today, what are your chairs? Do you need to get out of your chair and go to a teacher? Do you need to go to a friend? Do you need to go to a junior or senior and pray with them? To, right now, I want you to get your chair moved out of your way. You know what? Just as Guthrie's singing, he sees you. He knows you. So if you think you're hiding something from the creator of the universe, dude, really? Get it out. Quit hiding. The enemy loves you to stay hiding. You know why? Because he can beat you up. 
Every day. Every day he can beat you up. Why do you let him win every day? Because you're more than a conqueror. That's what the Word says. The Word says you are victorious, yet you live defeated every day at Trinity Christian School. And let me tell you, I'm tired of it. Because I'm not living defeated. If you're around me, dude, you better get in line because we're fixing to go to battle and we're going to have victory and I win in the name of Jesus. Are you winning? Are you just living? Are you just surviving or are you thriving? What are you doing today? What chair's in your way? You have an opportunity right now to start being who God says you are. You are more than a conqueror. You are a mighty man of God. You are a mighty woman after his heart. Get that chair out of your way today. know this year in our home we pick a word we feel like God gives us a word every year to dwell on to speak on to think on and this year in in August I was like God what is my word and he gave me a word from Colossians 3 1 through 2 and the whole point was who are you struggling on behalf of who are you praying for today who are you seeking the Lord for today There are people at Trinity Christian School dying and going to hell sitting beside you every day And you're concerned about what your hair looks like or if your jeans are the right thing. Or I really don't want to do Miss Cox's dress code, so I'm going to try to duck and avoid her all day. Don't tell me you don't do that because I see you. Who are you struggling on behalf of? Look around. There are people who need you to be praying for them. And you're so caught up with yourself that you're missing it. So right now, guess what? Right now, you're going to start struggling on behalf of somebody. You're going to start praying because the Word says as you struggle on behalf of them, you're doing it because you want their hearts to be knit together in love, that they can know the full mystery of God. They're missing it. And you've got it. Dude, if you've got an amazing gift, don't you want to share it? If you get a great deal on a pair of jeans, you're going to go tell everybody. Right? Right? Because you want them to know, look where I got, look at these jeans, I got a great deal. It's the same thing. You've got the God of the universe and you're hiding it. So right now, you're praying. Who's God bringing to your mind right now that you need to be praying for? Speak it out loud. Start praying for that young man. Start praying for that young woman. Start praying for your mom. Start praying for your dad. Because you can change your family. Struggle on behalf of them right now.
we're going to pray about. I think it's time for TCS to wake up. It's time to wake up. You have the ability to impact thousands. And you barely get through the stinking front door. I love Colossians. You'll hear me talk. If you're ever around me, you will hear me quote it a lot. Last year as I was doing small groups for my eighth graders and all the other ones I was doing, the Lord gave me Colossians 3, 12 through 14. And the whole premise of that is as you are beloved by Christ, put on, put on compassion, put on kindness, put on humility, put on gentleness. Forgive Forgive others. And the most important, put on love. Because love in the end is the perfect bond of unity. What are you putting on every morning? What do you put on? Are you putting on a sarcastic, I'm going to have a horrible day attitude? Are you putting on a selfish, life's really all about me and I'm going to make sure everybody knows it attitude? Dude, I want to challenge you. Put on a heart of compassion. Put on humility. Put on love. Get up and get clothed in Christ every day. Wake up. Forgive. Keep your list short because you never know. You never know. Coach Warwick didn't go to bed Friday night thinking that was it. But you know what? He did exactly what Colossians 3, 12 through 14 says. Every day. And he had a short list. He just forgave. Do you need to forgive somebody today? Are they standing in this room? Maybe it's a teacher. I don't know. Go do it. Get it done. Right now, I want you to pray that you will begin to put on these things. And if you need to forgive somebody, go do it. And if you need to ask for forgiveness, get out of your chair and get it done. Can we turn off all the lights? And I want everybody to get out their phone. I know you've all got it. Except the junior heights, okay. 
If you do have it, don't get it out. High school, take out your phones. Get it ready to put on flashlight. Tristan, turn on your phone. Hold it up. I just want Tristan's phone up right now. Nobody else's. Hold it up, please. One light. One light makes a difference in this room. Right? Because now I'm not stumbling through hoping I don't trip off the stairs. One light. Freshman, turn on your lights. Hold them up. Keep yours up, Tris. Looky there, one class. One class following a leader. One class choosing to be a light. Juniors, turn on your lights. Two classes. Two classes. Wow. Look, we can see. We can see each other now. You shouldn't be talking. You can see now. Sophomores, turn on your lights. Hold them up. See, if you turn on your light and you keep it down here, nobody sees your light. Remember that little song, This Little Light of Mine, Don't Hide It Under a Bushel? Remember that song? I can sing it for you. Come see me. Seniors, hold up your light. Wow, look around. What happens when a group of people collectively choose to turn on their lights? They collectively choose to walk in the light. What happens? You light up a room. What happens if this room of light walks out into a dark world? Because you need to understand you're in a battle every day. And the only way to win that battle is you better get your light up. And you better know the word. Because your offensive weapon, get, I see some lights down. Do I need to come help y'all put your lights up? Juniors, I need you leading. Your one light changes the darkness around you. Never assume that what you do doesn't matter. Because there's always somebody watching you. Be a light. Change your world. Father, I thank you for these students. I thank you that the word says you are the light of the world. I love how SJ, my little boy, asked me the other day, why is God so bright that in heaven we don't need the sun and we don't need the moon? Oh, God, I love that. So I love that your word says you are in us and on earth we are your hands and feet. And so we need to turn on our light and be so bright that there's not a need for another light. Oh God, remind us every day that our one light changes a dark world. Father, I thank you that you heard the cry of our hearts today. And we go out walking in a manner worthy of you, bearing fruit, being empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. You're dismissed.